Welcome to Cool Seminary Tutorials. Hi, I'm Professor Wendy. I'm excited to say that this video is part of a series. The series is a collection of useful quotes from John Wesley, the founder of Methodism. Whether or not you agree with Wesley, these quotes will help you to understand him and why he has had such a great impact on so many for more than two centuries. These collections of quotes are not comprehensive, otherwise the videos would be way too long but they are representative of Wesley's thinking. Some of you may be aware of even better quotes, so let me also invite suggestions from you about additional John Wesley quotes. In this video, we're going to look briefly at John Wesley's understanding of baptism as a sacrament and a means of God's grace. John Wesley defined baptism as a sacrament in accordance with the teachings of the historic church. Quote, question, what is baptism? Answer. Baptism is a sacrament wherein Christ has ordained the washing with water to be a sign and seal of regeneration by his Spirit. Baptism for Wesley is unique in that it is a rite of passage into covenant relationship with God. Quote, what is baptism? It is the initiatory sacrament which enters us into covenant with God. It was instituted by Christ, who alone has power to institute a proper sacrament, a sign, seal, pledge, and means of grace, perpetually obligatory on all Christians. We know not, indeed, the exact time of its institution, but we know it was long before our Lord's ascension, and it was instituted in the room of circumcision. For as that was a sign and seal of God's covenant, so is this. Wesley used the Anglican Church's catechism to define and distinguish between baptism and new birth. Question. What meanest thou by this word sacrament? Answer. I mean an outward and visible sign of an inward and spiritual grace. Question. What is the outward part or form in baptism? Answer. Water, wherein the person is baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Question. What is the inward part, or thing, signified? Answer. A death unto sin, and a new birth unto righteousness. Nothing, therefore, is plainer than that, according to the Church of England, baptism is not the new birth. Because God had appointed baptism as an ordinary means of grace, Wesley believed everyone should desire it. Quote, the plain meaning of the expression except a man be born of water, is neither more nor less than this, except you be baptized. And the plain reason why he ought to be thus born of water is because God has appointed it. He has appointed it as an outward and visible sign of an inward and spiritual grace, which grace is a death unto sin and a new birth unto righteousness. As important as is baptism, Wesley refused to believe it was absolutely necessary for salvation. Quote, you think the mode of baptism is necessary to salvation. I deny that even baptism itself is so. If it were, every Quaker must be damned, which I can in no wise believe. I hold nothing to be, strictly speaking, necessary to salvation, but the mind which was in Christ. In his treatise on baptism, John Wesley listed five benefits of baptism. First, the washing away of the guilt of original sin. Second, we enter into covenant with God. Third, we are admitted into the church and made members of Christ its head. Fourth, we are made the children of God. Fifth, in consequence of our being made children of God, we are heirs of the kingdom of heaven. Wesley was an avid believer that one's age does not determine need or eligibility for the grace of baptism. Quote, it has been already proved that this original stain cleaves to every child of man and that hereby they are children of wrath and liable to eternal damnation. It is true, the second Adam has found a remedy for the disease which came upon all by the offense of the first. But the benefit of this is to be received through the means which he has appointed, through baptism in particular, which is the ordinary means he has appointed for that purpose, and to which God has tied us, though he may not have tied himself. Indeed, where it cannot be had, 
the case is different, but extraordinary cases do not make void a standing rule. He was adamant that scripture and the historic church authorized the baptism of infants. Quote, On the whole, therefore, it is not only lawful and innocent, but meet, right, and are bound in duty in conformity to the uninterrupted practice of the whole Church of Christ from the earliest ages to consecrate our children to God by baptism, as the Jewish Church were commanded to do by circumcision. Wesley allowed that everyone retains freedom to accept or reject God's grace, so the need for confirmation and continuing accountability. The question is not, what you was made in baptism do not evade, but what are you now? I allow you was circumcised with the circumcision of Christ, as St. Paul emphatically terms baptism, but does the Spirit of Christ and of glory now rest upon you? else your circumcision is become uncircumcision. Wesley argued that many so-called Christians in practice denied their baptism and therefore still needed saving grace. Quote, You have already denied your baptism, and that in the most effectual manner. You have denied it a thousand and a thousand times, and you do so still, day by day. For in your baptism you renounced the devil and all his works, Whenever, therefore, you give place to him again, whenever you do any of the works of the devil, you deny your baptism. Therefore, you deny it by every willful sin, by every act of uncleanness, drunkenness, or revenge, by every obscene or profane word, by every oath that comes out of your mouth. Every time you profane the day of the Lord, you thereby deny your baptism. Yes, every time you do anything to another which you would not he should do. To you. Whether baptized at any age or not, what mattered most to Wesley was whether one had the marks of the children of God. Quote, Lean no more on the staff of that broken reed that you were born again in baptism. Who denies that you were then made children of God and heirs of the kingdom of heaven? But notwithstanding this, you are now children of the devil. Therefore, you must be born again. You have heard what are the marks of the children of God. All you who have them not on your souls, baptized or unbaptized, must needs receive them, or without doubt you will perish everlastingly. And if you have been baptized, your only hope is this, that those who were made the children of God by baptism, but are now the children of the devil, may yet again receive power to become the sons of God, that they may receive again what they have lost, even the spirit of adoption crying in their hearts, Abba, Father. Thanks for watching and exploring the thought of John Wesley with me. I'm Professor Wendy. Please take a moment to rate this video, add comments, and subscribe if you'd like to be notified when I publish new videos. Most of all, have fun learning!